Sit back and listen. It's time for License to Practice by IELTS Medical. Hello and welcome to another episode of Season 2 of License to Practice. Today I'm going to be talking with Alicia, a doctor from Spain. Don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode and let's give her a call. Hello Alicia. Hello Christine. Hi, how are you doing today? Fine, fine. Good. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thank you for coming on the podcast. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing your your story. So, if you could just start by telling us a little bit about you. Well, um, I'm a medical graduate from Spain. Uh, I've just, just finished my degree in Pamplona, Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to study for six years. Um, during those, I have like eight different hospital rotations. Wow. Um, so now I have the opportunity to move my career to the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I'm doing. Great. So are you already living in the UK? Um, nowadays, I'm not living in the UK because um, I need a work visa. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm working on. I've just uh, registered with the GMC um, and I'm applying for jobs so once I'm start um, working yes. I can live in the UK right so so you've got your GMC registration and you've you've finished all of that so now it's the work visa that you are that you're getting a hold of before you can move exactly yes yeah. I have to look for a job in order to to move to the UK but that's what I'm planning on doing at least during this couple of months before it starts in 2022 so yeah I'm pretty excited about it yeah yeah it sounds exciting it is exciting um so you've obviously done all of the exams and everything everything you had to do to become registered with the GMC in the UK you've done all that from Spain uh, well I actually uh, went to the UK for three months oh okay uh, where I studied um the OET exam Mm -hmm. and as I am from the EU from Spain I don't have to to do the PLAB so that was uh, an advantage for me so I just had to prepare the OET exam yeah um and once I I've received my mark I just started with all the papers uh, to start registering with the GMC Oh, okay. So did you do all your training and the exam for the OET over in the UK? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And did, was there any particular reason that you chose the OET uh, rather than the IELTS or was it just a timing thing or? Well, I tried the IELTS um, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tried to understand the nature of the exam. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a very like with a lot of topics it was not only medical so now that I've finished my career um and I feel more confident with my medical knowledge Mm -hmm. I thought it was a better opportunity for my English to start um directing my English to a medical um to the medical field yeah so I just studied the OVT because I thought it can it could maybe um I could maybe get the the skills that I need to mm-hmm. in order to practice medicine in the UK. Are you an overseas qualified doctor who would like to take the first step of registration with the GMC? Well, one way to do that is by achieving four grade Bs on the occupational English test. OET is a language exam with an emphasis on real situations UK medical staff encounter on a daily basis. Here at IELTS Medical, we have qualified native English OET trained tutors who are ready, willing and able to provide you with the best learning experience. We've seen lots of EU and overseas qualified doctors through to a first time OET pass and we'd like to do the same for you. Inquire today about how we can assist you too. And what sort of things did you um, do to prepare for that? Is there anything in particular that you found helpful um, to to prepare for the OET exam? Well, um, yeah, I mean, um, I had plenty of time that was very helpful. I had the whole three months just mm-hmm. 
uh, studying for the OET, but I think you have to have a pretty good level before starting. Mm-hmm. And for me, it, it was a little bit easy because my, my degree was half in English, half in Spanish. Oh, okay. So I took the advantage with that um, um, problems that mm-hmm. some other medi- like international medical graduates have. Like they normally do their career in their um, um, <laughs> language. In their, in their own, so, yeah, not in English. You mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was an advantage. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, you have to study for it. I mean, it's. I think it's a, an exam that maybe a native speaker will fail in some ways because there are mm. lots of um, a medical knowledge. Yeah. So you have to be prepared for it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so obviously you haven't um worked in the UK yet. Um, you've only you've done your placements uh, and your your hospital rotations in Spain. Um, do yes. you have you kind of been over here for the three months and, and preparing for your, for your OET, which obviously, as we've discussed, is a is a medical based sort of language test. Have you noticed any differences? Or have, did did that sort of teach you anything about about the way um, that the hospitals and doctors work over here? Well, uh, actually, yes. Like I, as you said, I, I didn't have the opportunity to work for the NHS, mm-hmm. but uh, starting for the OT, I just realized that the ethics and the humanistic approach in the UK medicine is really important. Mm. Um, that's something that um, it actually inspires me. And that's what inspired me to become a doctor. So that's okay. something that I really love from the UK, that the values of the different trusts and hospitals are very like present mm. in a day-to-day job. Like You have to be uh, very helpful and very empathetic with the patient. And actually, in the OET speaking, is something that they, that they mark when you are doing a role play with a patient. That's yeah. the speaking of the OET. You have to be empathetic. Um, you have to be non-judgmental. You have mm-hmm. to you have to approach a patient properly, yeah. not just with medical knowledge. Um, I thought that was uh, a very nice uh, skill a doctor must have. Yeah. And I think in the UK, they absolutely uh, focus on that type of skills. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good that you've learned that already from the from the language exam so you've got a bit of a bit of extra knowledge there I suppose for when you do come and start work here <clears throat> yeah exactly <laughs> um so why did you pick the UK is there any particular reason you wanted to come and be a doctor in the in our NHS <laughs> well um well I had the opportunity to come to the UK since I was a child um, mm-hmm. to study English okay or as a tourist and um, and it gave me a better understanding of the culture and mm-hmm. life here uh, but I would say there are uh, like two main reasons. On one hand, um, my sister and my partner went to the university there, mm-hmm. so it gave me the opportunity like to understand like the professional values that are recognized there. Yeah, which is like as I said before, like the strong work ethic, integrity, um, responsibility, or honesty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are the principles that that I stand for. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, like I'm really interested in geriatrics, mm-hmm. um, and the UK is like the beginning of this type of care. Yeah. So, in order to become a better professional, I think I need to learn from the expert in this in these matters, mm-hmm. and those experts are in the UK. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that. So, is that's the sort of um, when you do come and work over here? Is, is that the sort of job you're looking for? You want to work in geriatrics? Uh, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, as I as I am a junior uh, doctor, I have to start from an F one or F two level, and yeah. then I have to start my specialty program. Um, and, I, and I would love to uh, specialize in geriatrics. Mm-hmm. Oh but yeah, yeah I, I have to climb just to get into the, my life goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, and I'm sure you'll get there. Um, definitely. Um. So I've, I've yeah I've just realised because you've only just um, graduated, haven't you? So you'll be doing your foundation years in the UK. Yes. And is that um is that a, a kind of different process you have to go through in order to uh, do you have to apply to do your foundation years in the UK or does it not really matter? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, there are like two pathways mm-hmm. once you, w- when you're an um, international medical graduate. Um, mm-hmm. Aside from Spain, I cannot do an F1 position, so I have to apply for the F2 standalone okay. program. Um, and I have to apply in um, January uh, 2022 okay. in order to start in June. Right. That year. So, yeah, I'm planning on doing the foundation program, but if you did not get, because in, in the foundation program, you have to get a 400 um, points in mm-hmm. the OET in each domain. Mm-hmm. And in order to register with the GMC, you only need 350 points. Right. So, okay. So it's slightly so some, different sometimes then. Sometimes people don't get that um, mark mm-hmm. um, and they just start doing a clinical fellow. That's mm-hmm. just like the other pathway. Um, and they just um, get the skills that they need as an F2, and then they start their speciality, whether it's um, a surgery Mm -hmm. speciality or a clinical speciality, yeah, or even GP. Right, oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so it's slightly different to to another, if you've been graduated for a while and you've already done your foundation years. Yeah, um, exactly. elsewhere yeah okay interesting um so obviously your kind of journey is just about to start um next year in the UK which is very exciting um but do you have any advice for anyone um that is thinking about starting the registration process now um well yes I, I the first one will be to be very patient mm-hmm. with everything um as um medical um students we tend to be not patient at all um, okay. we want everything done in the minute and mm-hmm. this is not the case but yeah. that's that's not that you are doing something wrong that's just the process mm-hmm. and you have to understand it so just be very patient and absolutely you are you are going to get there um i have to apply this for myself because now mm-hmm. i <laughs> yeah i'm waiting for for the responses from the NHS hospitals of that course, I try yeah. to but yeah that will be the first one and I don't know I, I mean I think everyone should say that just follow what you are dreaming of yeah um, dream big yeah yeah oh well great I think that that's great advice um well thank you so much for coming on and and sharing your story and advice for people that um that are thinking about doing the same thing that you've done and I hope everything works out and I hope you hear back from the NHS soon and you can get yourself over here and start start work yeah um well yeah have a lovely evening then thanks so much thank you thank you so much Christine Thank you so much for listening to my chat with Alicia. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And hopefully, as always, the advice uh, given on this podcast helps. Don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And I will see you next time. And as always, to your success.